I will be lying if I said I didn't enjoy Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet is the most fun I have ever had in a Pokemon game since Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in 2014. While the game has some glaring problems in the gameplay like the lack of a level scaling in an open world environment, the main core gameplay is something I enjoyed very much. The story was not annoying unlike some previous entries. The new cast of both the Pokemon creatures and human characters, except one bad apple, were enjoyable. Exploring the Paldia region while catching Mons and collecting items was a lot of fun for me personally. The final 3 hours of the game is peak Pokemon, really well done. Pokemon Scott and Violet is a pretty good jump into open world gaming, at least in the gameplay sense. I am going to make a full review of the game about its shortcomings and things it got right in the future, so please look forward to that. But I want to make this video first. So, is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet a game that I would recommend people to play? Is it a good modern Pokemon game that fans have been waiting for years? It's hard to say so and you all know why. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's rocky launch finally makes it clear what the Pokemon series' biggest current problem is, and that is... STOP! RELEASING! GAMES! ANNUALLY! Or better yet, at least, STOP! RELEASING! THREE GAMES IN THE SPAN OF A YEAR! Let's talk more in depth. Part 1. Unacceptable Glitches Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's current status. It's a buggy, glitched mess. The glitches you see on the internet are hilarious. I've seen comments in my previous video about some people not running into any bugs or glitches, and while good on them, they haven't run into bugs, the fact that there are just so many clips on the internet of the bugs is not something that should be acceptable. The fact that other people are running to glitches, the fact that Twitter and YouTube is littered with clips and compilation of glitches, should never happen for any video game. I mean, there's something damn wrong when the Cyberpunk 2077 music goes nicely alongside the game. Or AVZN's review of big rigs over the road racing, narration can fit alongside Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's gameplay footage. You can't release something that's not finished. Who looked at this? I mean, who looked at this and thought, yeah, that's okay, put that out. There's credits which suggest that actual human beings were behind this. More than one. What were they thinking? Why would anyone want their name on this thing? And did any single one of them look at this and think, maybe there's still some work left to do? Personally, during the time I was streaming the game for my live audience, I haven't run into any game-breaking glitches, just some hilarious visual gaps. Still, this should have never happened in a game, let alone in a first-party Nintendo franchise game. I want you guys to remember that Nintendo has been very picky about the quality of the games the past three decades. That sea of quality they used until the 2000s actually meant freaking something. No matter how bad a Nintendo published game is, Paper Mario Sticker Star, Chibi Robo Ziplash, Metroid Other M, Star Fox Zero, none of them you associate the word glitchy with. But with Pokemon, they failed to meet Nintendo's standard of quality. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was a messy bug of a game, and now Scarlet and Violet is a messy bug of a game. Two years of buggy Pokemon games in a row. Can you honestly say BDSP or SV can get the seal of quality on his box art? Part 2 Unacceptable Graphics The graphics of Scarlet and Violet are not acceptable to me, too. The world of Paldia honestly looks like it's from a PlayStation 2 game. If you honestly think that this is the Nintendo Switch's weak hardware's fault and not Game Freak's incompetency or shitty engine or both, I say, GO PLAY OTHER SWITCH GAMES, THEY DON'T LOOK LIKE SHIT! Mind you, the Nintendo Switch can run modern AAA games like Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt, Doom Eternal, and Dying Light. Also, I must emphasize, graphics are not important to me. Remember when I reviewed Pokemon Legends Arceus? I barely complained about the game's graphics, cause you don't need good graphics to make a good game. I just complained about the game's growth being more empty than Elon Musk conscious, except the wild Pokemon. Moreover, I can think of plenty of other good games that have bad graphics but I consider them good. But still, graphics should at least not be distracting. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's graphics aren't just bad, it's stupidly distracting. And that's when I will start complaining. The pop-ins are distracting, the frame rate of objects far away dropping to like 5 is atrocious, and graphics are so bad it breaks your immersion, but it affects your gameplay, then it becomes a problem. I'm pretty sure this game is still running on the same engine as Pokemon X and Y, and mind you, this engine was made for the 240p handheld console, not for a full HD open world video gaming experience. You should have made a complete new engine, but that would have required too much time and effort and money and FU. What's worse is that Scarlet and Violet is not just playing bad, 
The problem is that the game's visuals are inconsistent. The human characters and Pokemon characters got revamps and have really good textures. Just look at Shiny Magnezone. But the texture of the game's world is awful. And there are even good parts of the game too, like Area Zero is really well designed visually. It feels like 80% of the budget went into this. Imagine if they were able to polish the game so the entire game looked like this. Area Zero makes it clear Game Freak has the potential to make the game look good, so it's just more of a shame they were screwed over. And again, this kind of fluctuating quality is unacceptable for me. Part 3, Pokemon's Greatest Problem So why did this happen? Well, the answer is simple. It's because Scarlet and Violet didn't get enough development time. Even if you disagree with my opinion in the first two points about the game's quality being unacceptable, I think the fact that it's been almost half a month since the game's launch, but they still haven't rolled out a patch that fixes the major issues, is damning evidence that the game was rushed and incomplete. In their recent video of mine titled, How Pokemon Became a Soulless Brand, I complained about Pokemon's greed these days. I got a backlash comment saying, Oh, Pokemon has always been a brand since 1996, what are you talking about? Asshole, did you read the title properly? It's not how Pokemon became a brand, but how Pokemon became a soulless brand. A soulless brand that doesn't care about the quality of the product it makes, just cares about maximizing profit. Since Pokemon games have always steadily sold well, some at the Pokemon company decided we should get annual releases to maximize profit. Maximize profit. That's literally the only reason why Gen 9 came out this year, even though we already had a Pokemon game come out earlier this year. Money. You would do anything. And because of the game's state of being obviously unfinished, it's apparent and clear like their freaking son that the developers didn't get enough time to finish making and polishing up the game. Yes, there'll be a big patch. Yes, I'm sure Game Freak will patch things out in the future. But launching a game at this stage should be unacceptable. Unacceptable! Imagine if Pokemon Lens Arceus came out in November 2022, and Scarlet and Violet came out in November 2023. One of my complaints about Lens Arceus is that there's nothing to do in their goddamn game other than catching Pokemon. Where are the dungeon exploring, Pokemon trainer battles, moving NPCs? If they had just had more time, these things would have been added into the game. On the flip side, for Gen 9, if they had a year more, they would have been able to make the game work and look better. Add interiors to the buildings, and a level scaling algorithm or something. If Lens Arceus and Gen 9 was just delayed, we could have gotten two excellent Pokemon games in a row. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Part 4 History of Pokemon's Rushing. Were you rushing or cutting corners? So Scarlet and Violet finally makes it clear the fundamental problem with the Pokemon series that's been building for years, and that there are too many releases. Stop putting out rushed, unfinished products. Take your goddamn time, damn it. I was gonna say annual releases are killing Pokemon, but it's even worse than annual releases. We got three Pokemon games in the span of a year, all of them being incomplete. You see the problem here? Just look at the release timeline of the Pokemon series on Wikipedia. Just look at how dense it is. The last time we skipped a year was 2015, during the Obama administration. Let that sink in. Kids born in 2015 could be old enough to play Pokemon games. Compare it to other Nintendo franchises. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, Kirby, they all have gaps between them. And before you say it, yes, I know Pokemon games had a general annual release schedule before 2015 too. But here's the difference. In the past, Pokemon were mainly handheld 2D games, or mostly 2D games, until Generation 5. I'm not a video game developer or anything, but I fathom that it takes more time and manpower to make Pokemon Scarlet and Violet than say, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, a 2D game? at least for a handheld console, with the power of a peanut. Look, making annual releases might have worked in 2D games on handheld consoles, but Pokemon games have moved on to an HD home console. The business model needs to compensate for that. These annual releases have been plaguing the series since it became 3D in 2013 with the start of X and Y. All the games since then needed at least a year more of development in my opinion. Let's do a brief rundown of the history of Pokemon games ever since then, of how no delays and annual holiday releases ruined them. X and Y, unfinished game with severe lingering plot threads, characters, and almost no post-game content. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, failed to have the battle frontier. Where is it? Sun and Moon, later part of the game is half assed with the Island Trials, some are just straight up missing, and there is no golf course. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, adds almost nothing new to Sun and Moon, and adds useless features with desperate nostalgia when there could have been a Sun and Moon 2, more like Ultra Cash Grab. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. 
Possibly the least unfinished ironically, but a cash grab remake nonetheless. Nobody was asking for, with only 151 OG Pokemon. Sword and Shield. Rush with problems like Dexit and high quality animations. Sword and Shield DLC. Didn't play so it might be good, but still fate to bring back old Pokemon. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Adds nothing to Sinnoh. Lazy faithful remake, buggy as hell. Legends Arceus. Nothing to do in the game other than catching Pokemon. And now Scarlet and Violet. Buggy and graphics looks like barf. Just imagine what this game could have been if they were delayed a year. I would say all of them had potential to be great, but they just weren't. I want a polished, finished game from one of my favorite franchises. Will I ever get another one like that in my lifetime? Part 5 Hisui and Paldia everywhere at once. And before you start whining, Oh, Giram, the games weren't developed annually. They had at least three years of development. I do know that is a fact. But either Game Freak needed more time than three years, they needed more people, or they shouldn't have stupidly developed two games side by side. According to interviews I can find, Pokemon Legends Arceus and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were co-developed side by side since 2019 with the end of the development of Sword and Shield. Many of you think that Game Freak split them into an A team and a B team, one working on Arceus and one working on Gen 9. Well, let's test that theory. This is a staff role list of Pokemon Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. I'm gonna disapprove the theory that Game Freak had enough personnel and split into two or some shit. There's a lot of overlapping people in this list. For example, Director of Gen 9 Shigeru Mori. He's listed as a producer and group manager of Pokemon creation section in Legends Arceus. Or Takaono, Director of Black and White 2. 3D Graphics Section Director and other positions in Legends Arceus, Pokemon 3D Visual and FX Section Director and other positions in Scarlet and Violet, or Tomoya Takahashi, General Manager of the Game Freak's R&D Division, Research and Development Director of PLA, System Programming Section Director for SV, or Tetsuya Watanabe, General Manager of the Development Division at Game Freak, both 3D Modeling Supervisor and General Producer for both games. In fact, most of the music and sound effects were done by the same people for both games. Long-time series composer Go Ichinose and his team. Would you please stop overworking your developers, you mother piece of greedy self Now, I know that not all developers worked on both games. Like the director of Arceus, Kazu Masayuao, does not show up in the credits of Scarlet. But still, the fact that there are a lot of overlapping people for two games that came out 10 months between each other is really concerning. You know the, the gym leader Larry in this game? His whole character is the typical Japanese businessman. Overworked and tired, apparently frustrated with his boss that makes him work too much in life. I think this is actually the developers trying to call out to us for help. They're Larry. Game Freak is Larry. This is a sign from people that needs help. We need to help them. Part 6. Comparison with other franchises. I think I should also compare Pokemon to other franchises to illustrate how abnormal an annual release schedule from one studio is. One of the closest similar series that come to mind is, of course, Call of Duty by Activision. Both are annual releases, both are console sellers, both have some fluctuating quality with releases, with some really great past games and some real stinkers, and both have really annoying toxic fan bases. But what is the difference? Well, Call of Duty is published by Activision Blizzard, but it's a series done by three different game studios. Most of the Modern Warfare games are done by Infinity Ward, most of the Black Ops games are done by Treyarch, and most of the World War II era games are done by Sledgehammer Games, and remakes are also done by other studios. Get the difference? Also, let's just compare the number of basic manpower. According to Wikipedia, Game Freak has 169 people as workers. For the Call of Duty series, Infinity War has 444. Treyarch has 200. Sledgehammer Games has more than 450. Just to make it clear, both Pokemon and Call of Duty are annual release franchises. Not counting the one-off BDSP, Pokemon has one developer studio with only 169 people working on it, while Call of Duty has three developer studios with 1,094 plus people working on it. Literally six times more manpower. Stop treating your developers like slaves or overworking them like Larry, you f***ing d***. Assassin's Creed is another franchise that comes to mind. Same annual release, same reusing the basic formula again and again till the sermon burns out. But again, just like Call of Duty, it's usually developed by, well, uh, a bunch of different cities, I guess. And another difference. Since 2010, Ubisoft has attempted an annual release cycle like Pokemon or Call of Duty. But after the mixed recessions to Ask, Create, Unity, and Syndicate, and I guess Unity is basically Gen 9 equivalent with the amount of glitches, 
they decided to allow ear skips. Now the upcoming Assassin's Creed Mirage has had a 3 year gap between the previous Assassin's Creed Valhalla. How about other Nintendo franchises? Well, actually, the Mario series always had frequent releases if you think about it, but it's usually spin-offs or other stuff, not mainline Mario. If you just count mainline Mario games, not even including the Maker series and mobile games, we had 3D World in 2013, Odyssey in 2017, Fury World in 2021, and there's still no date for a new release. The Zelda series. Again, two years gap between releases, and even Link's Awakening and Skyward Sword was developed by other studios. Nintendo had worked full-time on Breath of the Wild for 4 or 6 years, and Tears of the Kingdom had been worked on for 6 years. Imagine if these games came out 1 or 2 years apart. It would have been a disaster. I seriously hope Pokemon Company copies this and allow freaking delays of release. I don't mind DLC or star versions or remasters or spin-offs to fill in the gaps, but just don't release another brand new mainline game next year. If the black and white remakes, black and white 3, Legends Curum or whatever gets announced for a 2023 November release, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. I complain about Pokemon a lot in my videos. However, unlike some of you may think, I think Pokemon's bigger problem is not that it's bad, but most of them are just too average, especially compared to the past games, that it lacks polish, that's not finished that there are parts that are rushed and cut corners. Scarlet and Violet is another continuation of that story, unfortunately. While Scarlet and Violet is the most creative, refreshing input Game Freak ever put in a modern Pokemon game recently, it has been ruined by rushing and cutting corners. SV at least proved to me that Game Freak can perhaps make a good game if they had the time and resources, and they at least tried their best with the game. I think this game sort of makes me more pissed off than Sword and Shield, because there are things I really liked about the game unlike Gen 8. It feels like a bigger missed opportunity. And the only problem was the greedy managing heads! Speaking of managers, I heard some people say I should not blame Pokemon Company for the annual release but rather Game Freak or Nintendo, because Pokemon Company is shared and owned by Game Freak, Creatures, and Nintendo. Well, first of all, that might be in the past and I think it's the managers at TPC that's dictating the release schedule, not people like Junichi Masuda or Shigeru Mori. And second of all, I don't freaking care whoever it is to blame, I just want a good finished game. Whoever made that decision, f you, and Tsunekazu Ishiyara, f you as well, because you're the closest thing to the head CEO of Pokemon. You're in goddamn charge, and you need to take responsibility and step down. Step down and get out of here. This PR disaster is your fault. I want to tell everyone that no matter the quality of Scarlet and Violet, whether you enjoyed it or not, this is the biggest PR disaster for Pokemon. Possibly even a bigger PR disaster than Sword and Shield's launch with Dexit. At least with Dexit, it was just kind of the hardcore fans that were mad. From this game's disaster of a launch, the public image of Pokemon became the series that keeps putting out rushed, unfinished, glitchy games that look like shit. I've seen people who rarely talk about Pokemon games make fun of Pokemon, seen YouTubers who never cover Pokemon like Pyrocynical or Review Tech USA cover this game. Scarlet and Violet is a shit show. The average consumer and gamer's view on Pokemon is tainted, and that's the biggest takeaway of this video. Bottom line. Fix this game with patches immediately, and delay the next crappy game 2 or 3 years, Pokemon Company. I don't mind if 2023 or 2024 is Pokemon free. No, more annual releases, we can't wait!